Dang it. Now the cylinder liners and the pistons are those that we got out of an engine last summer that we took apart to scavenge some parts for a project out of. And we were pleasantly surprised by the condition of the cylinder liners because as we took measurements we found they were all well within a thousandth of an inch of uh, being the same bore at the top as they were at the bottom which is called taper and also we found that they were easily within a thousandth of an inch in terms of ovality or out of round also from top to bottom so uh, very good liners and one problem though that we found was number 12 here number 12 is in a little bit different condition than the rest of these this is how a this is how a normal used cylinder looks got a little bit of pitting right here but other than that it looks almost new and we've got them honed on the inside uh, ready to accept rings so that's the way it should look now, number 12 looks pretty much the same on the inside, but on the outside, we've got this issue right here. And that is severe pitting on the outside of the, uh, of the cylinder liner. And this is the part that is between the block, which this fits into up at this point, and the cylinder head. So uh, this gives me a little bit of insight as to why the porting job was done on the cylinder heads without actually doing a valve job. Usually, if one liner looks like this, all of them are going to show signs of the same sort of thing. What I think happened here was that one of the cylinders cracked, which some of them tend to do through here, the narrow point where cylinder liners fit together in the engine. And you got to replace that because that's that's a uh, coolant leak into the into the engine and a compression leak out of the cylinder so what i think happened here was they pulled both heads off because you can't buy one cylinder head gasket and they replaced the cracked liner with this used liner out of another engine and while they had the heads off they decided to do some rudimentary porting on the intake side and then put the engine back together again. So this little bit of forensic work uh, that we've done here. Uh, this cylinder liner, I don't, while it's very, very good spec wise on the inside, uh, I don't know how you would determine at what point that's a problem and when it's not. But I'm looking at that and I'm thinking, if I've got an extra cylinder, I'm going to replace this. And I've got Lucky Cylinder 13 here that I pulled off of the spare liner rack, and that is going to go in the game, place number 12.
done. Which brings us to the subject of pistons. Now, in terms of pistons, we weren't quite so lucky. Even though these are the same pistons that came out of the liners that we just looked at, they have a fairly significant amount of taper from bottom to top, although they're, uh, they're in good condition otherwise. So what I've decided to do in this case, being that we uh, one of the things we do out here is we spray dry film lubricant on skirts of pistons and on bearings. I decided that what I would do is to build up the material a little bit thicker at the top than at the bottom and uh, see if I can get these things relatively close to original specification. Now the cylinder diameter is 3.543 and the uh, specification for the piston then should be about a little less than two thousandths of an inch smaller than that. So what the number that we're looking at is 3.541. Now these I've done already. And what I've done is I've taken wet or dry sandpaper, having shot the dry film lubricant on the piston skirt, I've taken wet or dry sandpaper and I have contact cemented it to a 3M wet or dry Rubber, spun, uh, rubber squeegee and glued it on in such a way that it's got a little bit of a curve to it. And then I went ahead and wet sanded the, the skirts until I got them where I wanted them to be. And if we look at the dial caliper here, where we are on this last one is 3.542, so we're about one, one and a half thousandths too big at this point. We're about where we want to be there. Now, down here, we're going to be smaller than we'd like. We are about uh, four thousandths of an inch smaller than where we want to be. But there's not a whole lot we can do about that because this, I could actually take and mask these things off again and shoot some more film on there. Uh, but uh, the stuff isn't supposed to be any more than a thousandth of an inch anyway. And I talked to a technician at the company that, that uh, uh, provides me with this product. And he said, you know, it's not really for building up um, the outside dimension or the inside dimension of parts. It's basically supposed to be a lubricant, but we got some people that are experimenting with it. And it seems that if you build it up heavily, and uh, hand lap it to the proper dimension. If, it's, if the clearances are too small, it tends to self lap to a reasonable clearance. And that's kind of the reason why I'm doing this is that I got to see. So let's take a look at this, see what we can do. Remember, we're a little bit big here. We're where we want to be in the middle. And you can actually see as I wet sand this, you can actually see where it's small. You can see up at the top there where the wet or dry sand paper isn't getting wet or isn't wetting the surface. It's uh, smaller up at the top. Now down at the bottom, <clears throat> we should actually see aluminum eventually. So let's take a look here. And you can see down at the bottom, that's what we've got right down there. It's very, very thin here. You can see the, the, the finish of the, the stock piston up at the top here. You can see where we've got a uh, significant amount of material left. Let's go ahead and do this side. It doesn't take much sanding to do this. In fact, we're only going to do That much right there. And measure it again. Two, one, five. We're right about where, yeah, uh, yep, yeah, we're right about where we want to be there. A little bit small. We need to take this down a bit. Here. Well, 
We're a half a thousand big, but I'm going to call that good. It's a lot better than it was. Now, <clears throat> keep in mind, before uh, you start bashing me for wet sanding pistons to the proper clearance, that uh, early on I said this is not an engine overhaul best practices series of videos. What we're doing is having fun and just seeing what's ha what happens. We run these tests so you don't have to.